Assalamu alaikum. Invite endless blessings into your home. Please subscribe now. The button below. Bismillahir Rahmanir Raheem wa atiullah wa atiya Rasulul Amri minkum. InshaAllah we're live on Facebook for those who are watching. InshaAllah that the Ana Abdukul Ajeezu Da'eefu Miskeenu Zalim Mujahal and a lot of emails that are coming in help me at nurmuhammad.com and it's in uh, all of the work that we have there you can click on that link. That the concept of uh, forgiveness and the concept of stopping our sins, the concept of pornography and bad desires that when Allah give a shaykh guidance that they're trained in hypersensitivity and all sorts of different realities. It's different than an imam who you come and say, I'm sinning, what should I do? Oh astaghfirullah why you do like this, this is not nice and uh, make istighfar and don't do that again. We were talking earlier that if it was that simple just make istighfar and don't do that again then everybody would be walking on water because they would make istighfar and not do it again. But for us because this is a training in which the shaykhs they witness the energy, they understand the effect of energy, they, they understand the effect of the difficulty that insan will be put in because Allah put them and trained them in that understanding. So it's not just something through a paper but something through a haqqaiq and a reality in which they witness it and they understood its energy and its depth of its reality. So it means that it's an understanding like you fell into quicksand and there's no way to take yourself out of that quicksand. And the more that you struggle in someone saying, just you stop it and make and ask for forgiveness. As if you struggle you go deeper into the quicksand, it means what? You become hopeless because you're struggling, it's not stopping this desire, these actions, these bad characteristics and the person becomes hopeless and just says, well that's you know who I am and I'll give myself into every bad temptation and a bad desire. And that's not the reality. When Allah wounds somebody to leave something bad he sends them to guidance and that's why shaitan is so fiercely against having guidance and you don't need a guide because if you don't need a guide shaitan is saying, I will be your guide. And then the real guides whom are trained in energy they understand. They understand that you're like a ship, like a bus. If you take on too many negative energies from what you eat, what you drink, what you see and what you hear from all your senses, if they're not towards Rahman and you give your senses towards all of these bad characteristics, your bus is filled with all sorts of negativity. All sorts of badness and bad characteristics, shayateen, all these negativities. If your bus is filled with negative characters, whole bunch of disobedient energy, of course you think, what do you think, they're going to take over your bus, they drive you in a different direction. Every choice you make from that point on is because of the inhabitants of the bus. Our life was to understand that, that who am I being comprised of, of all my bad desires of what I'm hearing. That's why a hudan al-muttaqeen means none know it but the, the, the guidance of the muttaqeen we've talked in other talks. Why they're muttaqeen? Because Allah, Allah gave them the reality of the fasting from all their senses, trained them in their senses and then dispersed them onto this earth to train other people. If Evil and badness coming through your ear, it's entering into your being. Your being is just a bus, a ship carrying everything. If what comes to your eyes is of a badness and bad desire, bad characteristics, bad energies, bad nazar upon everything, of course then the ship becomes contaminated. What you breathe, then what you taste and what you eat means these senses 
become overtaken by the bad characteristic then you become this bus that's filled with bad energy. Then imagine this bus with all of these evil characteristics and characters on side your bus. Of course they say, stop here do this haram, watch this and do this haram and be angry and do this forbidden. Every type of badness begins to come to the servant. So when Allah gives these shaykhs, give the guides the understanding, this is all about energy. So then your defense and your protection against this negativity is how you understand and how you build yourself, how you build your energy, how you build your connection. That what do you eat and, and the cleanliness of that energy that you're eating, that you're taking on the energy. They understood that when they eat certain foods and certain places they can feel the energy of the person who's been preparing it. The people and the staff at the restaurant, the people and the staff that are all around, they feel the energy and that energy is going into the food and it's now affecting them. They can go home and feel a desire that was not theirs, why? Because they understood it came from the food. So when we understand all these then what I drink is going to affect me. I'm going to make du'a and everything, what I eat is going to affect me, I have to make du'a and everything. Everything that I do and all my actions that I'm doing has an effect upon me. So then I'm going to understand all of these senses, I'm going to not just say istighfar and stop it but I'm going to now focus on my senses, Ya Rabbi grant me that my ears to hear good. So it means then start listening to salawats and it begin to attack whatever is trying to attack you in your ears, you have to attack them back at all the same points. This is a fight and a fight to the death with shaitan. If you know he's coming after your ears, play salawats to fight him so that you clean this entry point, your, your castle is your heart. The kingdom of Allah is entering into your being, so then protect your kingdom. Protect your ears and listen to salawats, listen to Holy Qur'an, listen to that which is good, listen to talks and realities that improve your being. Then look to your eyes and say that, I want to purify my eyes Ya Rabbi, I want to keep my nazar on my feet. I take a path in which my nazar bar qadam, that Ya Rabbi let me to live a life in which I lower my gaze and that let me to, to look at my feet and where these feet are taking me in life. Let me to purify my gaze and then I begin to put the pictures of awliyaullah all around where I am, all around my computer, all around my home. A most ridiculous statement you can make is, I heard that this is shirk. Uh, if you think having a picture of pious people is shirk but having pictures of naked women is something you make tawbah about, you're crazy in your understanding. If you're going so far as to do all of these forbiddens and look at all of these forbidden images, you have to fight shaitan right at that location. Means then we were taught that, put the pictures of pious people. Why you say it in your salah, As salamu alayka ayyuhan nabi wa ibadullahi salihin. In your salah, Allah is teaching you, give your salams to Prophet and ibadullahi salihin. All the salihin that are all around Prophet in your salah, Allah is teaching you, give salams to them. So then, where would it be forbidden to have them around the home? All these awliyaullah and pious servants, you don't have to know who's a wali, just say, this is a Nurani person and he reminds me of the love of Sayyidina Muhammad Then I put those pictures all around the computer, I put it as my screensaver, I put it all around the house because now I'm in a fight with shaitan. As he's coming from my eyes, I see the picture of my shaykh and I say, oh maybe I shouldn't be clicking on that link right now. I can see my shaykh looking at me, I can see the face looking at me and the power of the soul because this is Allah's creation, this is not a drawing. As soon as you look at them you feel the energy coming into your heart that don't click on that, don't look at that. So you're, you're putting this battle, you know tit for tat, if, the, if the shaitan is coming after your eyes put the pictures of awliya and pious people all around, put it as a screensaver. Put the Qur'an and salawat into the ears, be, be conscious of what you're going to eat, where you're going to eat it. 
If it's halal but the energy of people bad, make a du'a on everything that you eat. Ila sharaf al-Nabi wa ali wa ashabi kiram wa la mashayikhina fi tariqata nashbaniyat al-aliyya. We have the du'a for eating food on the earth. So then everything you're about to eat and drink should have a du'a upon it. Because when they understood the secret of food is that there's an energy on the food. And this energy comes into the mouth and from this mouth the energy will try to make its way into the heart. I think they say they have 32 teeth, 16 that carry the good and 16 that carry the bad energy. And that's why many Ahlul Bayt their teeth are cracked and deformed because they carry the burdens of people. So the first defense Allah gave you, why Allah gave you teeth? He could have given you just you know hard gums and you can gnaw through everything. Everything Allah designed from us is a defense and an energy mechanism. That what you're going to eat when you have a du'a on it or you don't have a du'a on it, it's comprised of the energy from the creature, from the one who touched it, the one who prepared it, the one who… Everywhere along the line this thing that you're putting into your mouth has been collecting energy. And you just put it right into your mouth, chew and then start to go down and then dentists found out that the plaque on the teeth causes heart attack. So they found out the physical correlation between your teeth and your heart. Oh. Well they already know. Oh. And why Prophet taught them was the siwak. The siwak nifaqi fi qalbi wa shirki khafi was the siwak was a grounding. It was not for brightening your teeth and say, well I use crest so I don't need to use siwak. No siwak is a piece of wood that grounds energy. As soon as you put it into your mouth whatever negativity that was from the food, from the energy, from the breath, from the drink, whatever we're bringing in before it goes into the heart and begin to attack the heart because shaitan's trying to enter into the being to attack. It's a fight to enter the castle and go after where the king is seated upon the throne. As soon as you put siwak it's a grounding like a prong that pulls all the negativity and all the bad energy out. So then they begin to understood the defense of their mouth, defense of their breath. When they understood the power of their breath they didn't take their breath into areas that were forbidden. Some people say, I don't smoke but it's okay the other people do. And I go to places where everybody's smoking but I don't smoke. It's just a matter of time that those creatures are entering into you. And anybody who purifies themselves they can witness that smoke comes after them 20 feet away, 30 feet away because the smoke are shayateens. There's the dhuriya of shaitan in that, in that tobacco, they say it's 99 different carcinogens, poisons. So who, who's a poison? If shaitan is a poison. As soon as that tobacco is lit and that smoke is moving it's the, it's the pro, prodigy of shaitan coming towards you. And if you didn't put in your mouth it's coming into your nose through second hand smoke which they say is more deadly than the first hand smoke. So then you guard your breath that, Ya Rabbi let my breath to be clean and not to be around the people whom are trying to destroy their tree of life within their being. So the mutaqeen were trained. Wa hudan al mutaqeen wa Allah said, nobody knows except those whom are guided, the mutaqeen whom are guided. Means that the, their guidance that they were guided to a, a degree in which to come back and guide people to be fierce against their war with shaitan. You can't say that shaitan knows more and, and the ulama of Sayyidina Muhammad don't know anything. It's the ones whom are in they are only external scholars don't know anything. The ones whom are internal they have been trained by Allah by Sayyidina Muhammad by awliyaullah. So they understood this mutaqeen, they understood this power of their mouth, they understood the energy that coming into their mouth, they understood how to protect the energy of their mouth, their breath, how to protect the, the energy of their eyes. As soon as they walk with their head up they feel the arrows of shaitan coming towards their eyes. 
and the energy that coming and attracting into their eyes when they go to the mall and when they go to public spaces so they keep their qadam, their eye upon their feet and they understood their breath and their hearing. As a result they fought at all entry points against shaitan so that the energy not entering them with that negativity and as a result without that negativity they become excess positive. So then when you fall into a chal and you fall into a hole of sins, Allah didn't expect you lift yourself out. This was Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah not Ahlul Sunnah and you alone. So they pick and choose when they want to call themselves Sunnah and Jama'ah and they don't understand and carry through with the whole thing. One is Ahlul Sunnah is you should have your head cover otherwise why you keep calling yourself Ahlul Sunnah? What's you, what of you is Ahlul Sunnah if your head is not covered all the time? You say, well Diva Ahlul Sunnah wa Jama'ah none of them in the audience have even a head cover. Isn't that the Sunnah of Prophet You should be from Ahlul Sunnah you should have uh, your greatest weapon always in your pocket is your siwak. They should have a ring and understand that the ring was for nazar and the nazar of people upon them. They should wear clothes of modesty because these are the, the clothing of a warrior of Allah Don't you see in the old uh, Bruce Lee movies they even had ju mm -hmm. jubba in, in Asian movies. They're in full sunnah. There was a time in which everybody walked with this sunnah and that was a gift from the presence of Sayyidina Muhammad as a result they understood their fierce and their understanding of energy and how they protect themselves. So Allah didn't expect though for, for everyday sinner just you know make istighfar and stop doing it. How did they go through all that training if it was so simple? So but what Allah prescribed for you, وَقُنُوا مَا صَادِقِينَ إِتَّقُوا Have a consciousness and be with the sadiqeen, be with truthful servants whom they are truthful with their deeds and their actions. Means keep the company of people, tariqatun asoba wa khairu fi jamia. Keep the presence of the jama'ah, keep the presence of pious people, keep the presence of people whom are struggling to improve themselves. As a result they're a rope. So every time you fall into a hole you hold tight to their rope and they begin to teach you, they begin to uplift you, they begin to pull you up so that the, their excess positive energy can hit you and push out all of these negative energies and they basically come onto your bus and beat everybody up and throw them off. And it's not something hard for them. You think the passenger on the bus has more power than a pious servant of Allah no, with just the nazar most of the occupants will be taken off of that insan. Then the few stubborn ones they require a little bit more of a beating. Means that Allah didn't want for us to struggle alone but keep the company of pious people. In the fellowship of this power you should find a safety, a teaching and understanding. As a result they uplift their students from these sinnings and from these actions and then teach them that to make your zikr and everything we went over, how to guard your ear, how to guard your eyes, how to guard your breath, how to guard your tongue, how to guard your entire being from all of these attacks. Then be conscious of what you're going to eat, all of this training and then their knowledges and all of the knowledges that are being conveyed to the heart. Each knowledge has an energy for the soul and dresses and blesses the soul. We pray that Allah give us a, a greater understanding of this reality of fighting and combating negative forces, negative desires. Don't just succumb and say that pornography everywhere and I'm going to do it. No, it's the abundance of negative energy. And why shaitan is going after the believer because if you should reach to your reality you're the power of a thousand men and one by one he wants to take the Bani Adam out of the game. How? By contaminating their eyes. You don't see the attack, his pornography is at every phone, it's just one click away. 
He attacks their ears with every type of horrific music, bad lyrics, bad sounds. Why? To darken the heart of the servant. Every type of forbidden and dirty food, every type of forbidden drink. They say the drinks are spirits, they're not even hiding what's in it. You're drinking spirits and, and being surprised why shaitan has entered into that insan. So it means that Allah is teaching us, there is a way, if you want it follow them. Their tariq, their way is a way against devils, their way is, a, is an understanding of how shaitan is operating in this dunya and that the rahmah of Sayyidina Muhammad have not left people to themselves and their bad characteristics. InshaAllah bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa wa bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. Click the link now to subscribe.